Everybody's got a story. You just have to listen. Hola, I'm Joe Pardaville, and this is Good Listen. And since we're living in a world of alternative facts and fake news, I wondered what that effect has on the next generation. Like, do kids today want to be TV reporters? Do they even want to be involved in news? So I've got Taylor Miller on the show joining me today. Taylor is a reporter at a local TV station in Charleston, South Carolina. It's her first big break. She's in her early 20s. So I wanted to get her on to see what inspired her to get into news and what it's like being a TV reporter in 2024. Taylor Miller, welcome to Good Listen. How are you? I'm good, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy that you're happy and I'm happy as well. And I want to start by talking about your profession in terms of the way it looks now. So as a kid, as a Gen Xer, little, I've got a few more miles on me than you do. Uh, you, if you want to be in media, you grew up with either radio or television. So I gravitated towards radio, spent 20 something years doing that in New York City. And so it, it was pretty like clean cut, like you were doing one of the two. Now with technology, things have changed. And I've noticed that People are doing all different things. I remember when I was doing radio 10 years in, uh, someone said to me, like, who's the next big radio star? I'm like, they don't exist. They're on YouTube. This is when YouTube started popping. So now, obviously, there's YouTube and TikTok and all these other places people can either be influencers, create content. So as someone, and I wanted to, let's start. Are you Gen Z or are you a millennial? I am, um, oh, I, 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 I think I'm a Gen Z. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're So you're Gen yeah. Z. So as a Gen Zer, is it? Common or uncommon that you would want to follow the path of traditional news? I mean, are there other folks? I mean, I'm sure there are, but like in your circle, they're like, oh, I want to be a 20 something and I want to be on TV doing the news locally. So let's set to start this set. Let's start that with that. Like why news at your age? So um, to answer your question, no, this is not a, um, a, a common practice among people, you know, in their early 20s in today's age. Um, but I grew up, you know, with my parents always had had the news on when I was growing up and and I, you know, I was in the musicals and, and I was out performing on stage and I liked that. You know, I, I honestly felt my most confident and comfortable when I was in front of an audience. So I was like, OK, I'm, I'm good at that. I like how that makes me feel. And I also want to be able to help and in any which way I can. And I've always felt that whatever I was going to do with my life, it was going to be um, it was going to have both of those things involved. So going into college, I, I wanted to start, I wanted to be in news. And that's very rare to know what you want to do and then just follow through with that and stick with it. Um, and luckily for me, I I landed my first job here in Charleston and it's been more than I could have ever, ever hoped for. So um, I, I have no regrets and I'm very happy that I, that I'm doing what I'm doing now and I decide to, to stay doing it. So. Awesome. Good for you. Um, so let's go back to college. Is there a, when the university you went to, is there like a, a, a news channel? Is there reporting? Is there, are you able to get stuff done? Because that's what, when I, because when I went to college, we had a college radio station, college TV station. So I wonder if now universities don't see the need for something like that because of the, the basically the self-sufficiency. Like if, if you want to, if you want to create something, you can just do it on your phone. So what was your training like in college? So... I actually majored in mass media communications and minor in journalism. So there was not any broadcast um, department or anything. I went to the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Um, so I, I could write great for a newspaper, but I didn't have any of that on-camera broadcasting experience. Um, so after I went to college, I ended up going to a, um, a, a media, mass media training, kind of like a trade school. I'm called the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and that is where I got my broadcast media. I learned all of the, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro and all that kind of stuff. That's where I learned um, after college, and that honestly was was major. And and to be honest with you, Joe, I don't know if having a college degree is essential for getting a job today. In any type of news, I feel like I learned a lot more from my that trade school I went to then that I use today more so than I did in getting my bachelor's. That's awesome. And uh, j just so you know, I'm very familiar. The Connecticut School of Broadcasting has been around for years and obviously started in Connecticut and spread all over. Um, and, you know, just just between you and I as radio professionals, we kind of like we kind of bust chops of people who went there because it's like, wait, you went to school for this? Like a lot of idiots who went, to, who were in radio were like, just had, were highly unemployable. So we didn't have much education. So we just kind of got jobs. So we still used to tease people who went to, to, to CSB and be like, 
dude, you don't have to, you don't have to go to school for this. You can just, you can just do it. But in your case, it worked out because in your college, you didn't have the hands-on that, that many schools that have a pretty solid communication program have. So that's good to know. All right. So and one more thing about your college. Were you the only kid in your school or maybe like, you know, in, in your community that were into the idea of being a, a TV news anchor, reporter? Like what, what were you surrounded by? Because I think that's sort of the thing for a lot of people. Like you find yourself in a community, you gravitate towards those people. And that's the thing you do. So were you surrounded people like that? No, I was not. But I did find myself surrounded around um, a bunch of other young people who were passionate about different things and, and were driven. So even though I was on my own path, we all had that commonality that there was something that we wanted to do um, that was bigger than ourselves. And and even though the professions were different, um, that's kind of what made each of us unique and special. Nice. Um, and so I spent a lot of time uh, hanging out with the New York TV people. And there's some sort of amazing connection that and this is not, the, people don't realize this, the connection between TV news personalities and the people in their community. And, and I'm sure you experienced this, and, I, and we're going to get to it in a second, because I remember uh, my my radio station used to do this uh, softball game, charity softball game, where it was our radio station against the the New York ABC affiliate. And we did it in a minor league stadium. And these news reporters were like rock stars. Like, they could give two shits about us radio people. Like, we had our fans there, but for whatever reason... The connection that news reporters build with with people is just it's hard to uh, it's hard to put into words. So tell me about your relationship with the community, because it's amazing that connection of, I guess, maybe just the daily turn on. People see you every day. They, they have it becomes a familiar face. So tell me about your connection with the audience that you have. So when we have so the show I work for is a little unique. It's a lifestyle news show. So we don't talk about, you know, the crime, the COVID, as much of the political stuff as you see on regular hard news, which I absolutely love. Um, so the the relationship's a little unique because we get to talk to all of these people who are just, you know, regular people that have their charity organizations or their stories that they want to share. And the fact that they are taking the time to come and sit with us and and share their stories and share what they're working on. Um, it, it really is beautiful, and we are just the vessel for them to be able to share um, their passion projects and, and, and things that are important to them. So that is really, really special. And I also think that that makes for a great person who, like yourself, right? You want to be a vessel for people to share their story, um, and, and you obviously you care. Um, and so that has been really incredible. And the relationships that I've created are, are so unique and beautiful because I'm able to have these conversations with people about things that make them happy and things that they really care about. Um, and, and I think that our audience responds very well to that. Um, yeah. So. That's cool. Um, so again, I hung out with a lot of New York uh, uh, TV personalities and, you know, the pay was pretty good. You obviously you pay towards the, to, to pay so people can live in the city that they're covering. So uh, what is the pay like these days in local news? And and I don't mean to get like literal with you, but yeah. um, what what is it like? I mean, are you able to sustain like a pretty good life? Are you able to pay rent, all the stuff that goes with living in a city, even though Charleston's TV market, I'm not even sure what number it is, but like, as you know, the city of Charleston, it's not cheap to live here, especially if you want to live close to the downtown area. So is it sustainable for you? Like to be a, a, a news anchor, you know, of, and, 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 and you know, in a, in a market like Charleston? Um, yes. You know, I, I am able to uh, pay my bills, but when I first moved here, um, not comfortably. So I had to find other means of income and actually led me to starting my own social media management business. Um, so that really helped me. Um, and it's kind of one of those things that that as you get more experience, right, that's when, um, you know, you can start making a little bit more money. And, and Charleston is in the top 100. It's definitely, it's, I think it's in the 90s right now. Um, so overall living in Charleston, um, you know, it's, it's a little more expensive than I thought, um, coming cause I actually moved here from Charlotte. So I was kind of comparing the two and, and, and they're quite equal living in the city of Charlotte and, and I live in West Ashley now. Um, so 
we do not make as much money starting out as some people assume I had. Um, I actually got some some messages when I first started here. Um, people being like, oh, you know, I hope you're, you know, you're helping your community with all that money you're making. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> if only you knew, if, if only you knew. Um, but but so, yeah, it's, it's not um, it's not as fruitful as I think it once was. Um, but as you get more experience and then obviously um, as your titles change and things of that nature, um, that is when I think you can start living um, living a little bit more comfortably and, and making a little bit more income. Yeah. And that's like that in any media market, like in New yeah. York, they're not, you know, if you're a cub reporter, you're not making a hundred K. So but, yeah. but then again, you're struggling like you did when you first got here. Um, and then, you know, what, what I find funny about watching Charleston television is it's either extremely veteran newscaster and then literally a kid who just walked out of college. Uh, yeah. There is no middle ground. And, and that's probably just because you know, folks w w are trying to elevate their careers. So probably go from, you know, market 90 to, you know, market 50 or, and, and what have you to move up. So tell me about the dynamics in, in and I know you're not strictly in a newsroom. You, you host like a lifestyle show, but like, what's the dynamic like in news in a market like Charleston, where you have these people that have been on television? I think the weather guy on, on the NBC affiliates been here for like 40 years or something like that. So, and then there's Kids like you just walk out from college and have their first job. So tell me about this dynamic in terms of, of the demographics with, within the industry here. Well, from what I've experienced, um, everyone has been very kind. And I haven't had that sense of um, the veteran newscasters, people who've been here for a long time, kind of having that sense of like, oh, you know, you're just this little, you know, the, this little newscaster. <laughs> it, it's been very, if anything... Um, it's felt like they just want to help you in any which way they can, which is beautiful and rare. Um, you, you do not always find that, but honestly, in, in any newsroom I've been in, um, the experienced newscasters, the people, you know, that I got an internship in Charlotte, right. And, and it was with this news channel that my parents watched every day growing up. So when I first got in there, I was like, oh my gosh, there's him and her and, and all these people that I've seen on my TV for years. Um, and they were all just absolutely wonderful. Um, so as far as the dynamic in the newsroom, absolutely. Um, I, I, I do think it's a very positive atmosphere from what I've experienced. Um, but I will tell you when I was applying for jobs, I wanted to come to Charleston and I got in touch with a recruiter and I told him, Hey, you know, I want to start in Charleston. And he was like, you know, you could never start in Charleston way too big of a market for you. Um, so, you know, I'm going to send you to these other markets, you know, in, in the one thirties, you know, the one sixties, and that would be a better place for you to start. And so I was very happy to send him an email that I, that I got. The <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I wonder why they would do that. Like just, I mean, even just give it, give it the old college try. I mean, what the hell? I mean, it can't hurt. Um, and so how competitive is it these days? Cause we kind of started the conversation by saying that, you know, the landscapes change. Kids are not dreaming to be, you know, the next, I don't know, fill in the blank, uh, you know, you know, uh, who's, who, who's like, a, who, I'm trying to think like, who, you know, Lester Holt, like who's, you know, what's be the next, oh, something like that. You know, when I was growing up, it was Tom Brokaw and uh, who else? Uh, Peter Jennings. So like there were these iconic people, but I feel like you don't have that as much anymore. So um, tell me, tell me about that. I did, um, during my interview process, I, you know, uh, applied to a few jobs. I didn't really hear back. Um, and you know, fast forward, when I ended up landing this job, I asked my my team, I'm like, so what was it about me? You know, what uh, what did I say or, or what did I do? And and they were like, honestly, you you just seemed like you cared. You know, you had your makeup done, your hair done, and and you just seemed like you really wanted, you know, to be a part of our team and and that you were hungry. Um, so I, I think that overall, because especially post COVID, um, people do not want uh the news is not what it used to be. Um, and also broadcast media, we don't know how long, um, you know, television news is going to be around for. So I, I don't think that the market is as saturated or is, is it as competitive as it once was. Um, but the cool thing is, is that I know a lot of people that started out in news and they went all these different directions. Um, so I think just the training that you get and the experience you get from, you know, being on TV or, or all of the different things that you have to learn when you're starting out, you have to be a jack of all trades. Um, I think that can lead into a lot of other things. And, and I honestly think that, um, so even if news isn't your your passion, right, or something you see yourself doing for for a long time, I mean, what a great way to learn 
um, how to do all of these incredible things that, you know, come with learning all the ins and outs of, of media and production. So tell me about the the show you're you're doing now that you were recently named the co-executive producer. Uh, within two years, you've 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 come leaps and bounds. Tell me about your trajectory. Like, what is this? What you were expecting when you came here? How how far things have come? Like, tell me about what the last two years have felt like. Um, no, it's not what <laughs> I was expecting when I when I first came here. And and I and I wish I could go back uh, two years ago and and tell myself she would you know. Uh, she would laugh in my face. Yeah, there's no way. But, um, you know, when I moved here, um, I was I just felt so um, lucky to to be here in this beautiful place that I wanted to work in. I was told I couldn't. and I did it anyway. And and I just felt so incredibly lucky to um, not only be in this in this beautiful city, um, but then also to have the team that I have. Um, I've been blessed with um, incredible people that I work with. Our team is very small, um, but it's just, it, it truly is a very healthy work environment. And I know that we've all worked in some not so healthy work environments. So that's definitely something I, I really appreciate. But, um, you know, I really just put my head down and, and I, and I worked and, um, and like I said, I, I just felt so blessed to, so it wasn't really that hard for me to work hard. I, um, my first time, you know, moving far away from my family, I really didn't have much, much else to do. So, um, you know, I just came here and I worked hard and it's kind of been this slow process, but there's also been a lot of things that have happened. Um, you know, fluke things that have happened, um, that have kind of put me in these positions to, um, to excel and, and to get, you know, that title change, um, so quickly, that's not normal. Um, me, even being able to conduct interviews like I do or host at any capacity is, is pretty abnormal for someone my age, but, um, it's just kind of been a little bit of right place, right time. Um, but also I, I do think that I have, um, I have, I have worked hard and, and it's been acknowledged. That's so. awesome. Good for you. Um, you mentioned earlier about the fact that, you know, sometimes just being a news reporter, uh, in, in a smaller market, the money's just not enough um, to, to live in that proper city. You, you mentioned you have to do other things. So let's talk about the other things you did. You started a social media company. Um, was that something that you've always felt like was part of what you did well, social media, and that's what, what gravitated towards you? But what, what was the impetus for doing that? Well, I was working. I worked at a restaurant in Charlotte called Fahrenheit. I worked there for about three and a half years. Um, you know, I started as a host, and, and I left as their social media manager, um, but that was kind of the, the first place that I started doing that. And, you know, I've, I kind of grew up in that weird time where, uh, social media really started coming out when I was, you know, in middle school and, and in high school, you know, is when I started getting Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I understood how it worked and, and also as, as me being a young person, um, I know what people my age want to see. So when I started doing the social media for this restaurant, I really enjoyed it. And I feel like I have an eye for that kind of stuff. Um, and so for me moving here um, and when I was talking about, you know, trying to get a side hustle, I knew that I could go back to the restaurant if I wanted to. Um, and, and I have, you know, I, I love the restaurant industry and that will always have a special place in my heart. I did it for a long time, but I, I wanted to try something different. So um, I ended up, you know, getting a social media client, um, who I've never met before, a plastic surgeon up in New Jersey. Um, and he was my first client. And then that's where Taylor, your media was born. And so I just kind of been doing some outsourcing and, and really trying to figure out which direction I, I, I want to take it. Um, but that has been something I enjoy. I, I love the fact that I can really do it whenever, wherever, you know, I'm not tied to clocking in, clocking out, especially with my, um, the job I have, it's, it's a unique schedule. So, um, it just all kind of made sense. And that has been something that has not only supplemented my income, um, but it's also something that I really do enjoy as well. That's awesome. And another thing uh, you have on your Instagram bio is options trader. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what yeah. that? 
Yeah, so I um, so I uh, play around in the stock market a little bit, and when I graduated from college, and I was, you know, I was going to broadcasting school, and I was bartending at uh, at the restaurant. Um, I just felt like something was missing. I felt like I wasn't doing enough, or I, there was just something that I was meant to be doing I wasn't doing. And um, obviously, this was after COVID, and so the stock market. I feel like that's when a lot of people started. You know, you heard about the, you know, the meme coins, the GameStop, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, my dad actually was like, Hey girl, like, you know, you should, you should check this thing out. And I was, you know, I was, I moved back home with my parents and, um, I was making money at the restaurant. And so I had some money and I was like, you know what, whatever, like, let me just, give, just give it a try. Um, and I was hooked. Um, it's so it's, it's really options trading specifically. It's, it's kind of, it's confusing, but, um, it's that came to be, and, and I don't get to do it as often as I, as I would like to. Um, but that is something that kind of really enhanced my financial literacy. Um, the way I look at money completely shifted after I started, uh, you know, really learning the stock market and, um, and, and learning how important it is for people to invest. Um, and, and I feel like that's kind of something for some reason that isn't talked about enough. Um, and then I feel like once you, once you get that bug in your ear a little bit, you, you can't stop talking about it. You just want to tell everyone. Um, and, and so that has really also been a huge thing that has shaped me, um, today. That's something I'm, I'm very passionate about as well. And especially for people, younger people, um, how important it is for them to, to know about it and be educated about it. Hmm. All right. I don't know a, a lot of Gen Zers in my, I don't have a lot of Gen Zers in my life, but are you atypical of them just the, the the number of things that you have going on in your life obviously the full-time job working at, at a you know at a news doing news in in charleston but then you know the social media company and day trade i mean are you a, a, an odd duck in the in the world of gen zers um you know i i think so i think i am and um, but what's really unique, and I actually saw a video, uh, Dana White was saying this, and it's something that has really stuck with me. Um, we live in a world today where people are so, people like their comfort and they like to stay in, in their comfort and, um, and, and they don't really want to be challenged. Um, and people are lazy. Um, and so I think that if you are someone who has a little bit of that edge to you and, and is hungry, um, I, I honestly feel like it's easier today to be successful than it has been. Um, I mean, especially like talking to my parents and whatnot. Um, there's just a lot of people who, um, are, are just okay with, you know, just being okay and and their life gets ahead of them they turn around and they're in their mid-30s and they're like oh my goodness you know where did all my time go um so I I do think that I am a little bit of an outsider when it comes to other people my age um but you know I, I mean someone got to do it right yeah and I don't even know if that's generation specific to Taylor because I remember when I got my first job in radio in New York I was 20 years old I was still in college I got and I was very fortunate and I had this sort of uh, fear. I was looking o over my shoulder, like, oh my God, there's going to be a, a younger, hungrier person coming behind me. And I kept looking, I kept looking, I kept looking. And then 24 years later, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running a morning show in, uh, on the air in New York City, and that person never came. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's specific to just your generation, but it could just be just being in the right place in the right time. I mean, that's obviously important because, you know, if the opportunity in Charleston wasn't open, you and even though you had dreams of, working in Charleston, you, you, the opportunity wasn't there. And it just so happened that it was. And it's funny, you say that about, you know, when you apply for the job, I don't know what it is. And maybe just because I'm getting older, it seems like news, news people in Charleston, they're like 16 years old. And I don't know if it's just because I'm getting old, Taylor, but <laughs> what are the, all you people that work in, in news in Charleston? You guys look like you're, and I don't, I, it sounds derogatory, but you look like children. You're so young. I mean, is, is this, is this pretty much part for the course that you're seeing in your peers in Charleston? Well, honestly, Joe, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, I, I mean, you go watch news anywhere. Now, in New York, obviously, is a little bit of a different situation. Yeah. We're not talking about New York City. Um, but, I mean, you go watch news anywhere, 
And there are just younger people. And I think also, you know, I grew up with these older people that were on the news, right? They were, you know, people who have been in news for years and and they were, you know, household names and whatever, you know, they, they worked in, whatever city. So I think that now just the times are changing, like going back to what we said earlier. Um, it's not as, a, as, as competitive as it once was. So um, I, I really think that it is just, um, just a, a thing that we're experiencing in today's day and age that all around the board, um, people are leaving much earlier than they were. Um, and then so there's just more opportunities for us, us young people to come in. Good for you. Um, it, I mentioned your Instagram account uh, earlier. It's you're very active on social media, obviously you started your own social media company. But tell me about the importance of having a social media presence, but also being a newscaster, because uh, you know, you hear about this all the time. I have, I have friends in, in the acting business that they, when it comes to parts, if it's a coin flip, they'll see, oh, who has more Instagram followers? Like it's, it's, yeah. that, it's, it's that odd that it's not about talent. It's like, okay, so this person has 10,000 followers. This person has five. Well, let's go with the person that has 10. So this happens. Um, how important is social media in terms of your career? Or is it just something that it's like two tracks running side by side? Like, tell me about the connection between social media and, and you know, tra traditional media in your life. I do think it's very important because they want, you know, you want to build yourself as a brand, right? So when I come in and I'm applying for a job, you know, I want to be Taylor Miller. That's my brand, right? So you can look me up online. You can see, okay, well, she has, you know, obviously this is, you're, you're coming with, it's a little bit more incentive also for companies to hire you because you already have people that, oh, you know, oh, she was on, you know, she was doing this or doing that. So all these people are going to go and tune in specifically to see that person that they follow. But to be honest with you, it's kind of something I've personally struggled with um, keeping up with my own social media presence, especially, doing, me, <laughs> yeah, you know, especially doing uh, the social media management. Um, the last thing I want to do is, is go and, and uh, post on my own, you know, Instagram page and, and, and when you're busy, that's just something for me that has kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, but I do think it's important. And I've had um, I've had many people tell me, managers and whatnot, that um, how important it is, especially when you're in more of like the lifestyle, because you are selling yourself as more of a um, a personality or like or like a best friend or or a girl next door. And that's really who you are. Um, and, and you want to show that as true as you can. And social media enables us to do so. So I do think it's important. And um, it's something I need to work on a little bit more. So, <laughs> Well, compared to this old Gen Xer, you're doing fine. But it is funny that you you have this self-awareness about brand. Uh, because I think my, my mentor many years ago had this line that uh, I'll never forget. And I still use to this day that when, you know, when someone in radio got fired, uh, he used to say, you know, you can't be a DJ without a microphone. And so like people's identities were tied into their career. So they saw themselves. And I think I, I was guilty of this for a while too. Is like the person you are is like the job you have. And it seems, and this could be a generational thing, who knows, that you're not just tied into just your day job. You have this brand you're building outside of it, starting businesses, what have you. Um, so yeah, so that awareness of, of building your own brand, was that just something that, that was just second nature to you? Or is that something you felt like you needed to do as you, as you started your career? So I had a, I did a little bit of modeling right when I was in high school and college. And so it was kind of something that I feel like that instilled in me. Um, but really, I, I mean, as far as, as building the brand, I don't think I'm even close to, to being there yet. I, I do think that, you know, like I said, is very important. Um, but I think that also the modeling, I still have representation from my mother, my mother agency. So she is kind of the person I go to. Um, that kind of helps steer me in the right direction. Um, and, and so she has really pressed that into me, especially with the lifestyle direction that I have decided that I want to continue in. I don't see me being a hard news girly. So I, I think that um, it was instilled in me from a young age. And I think now the people even younger, um, just because social media is as powerful as it is, um, and it's such an important tool that you can really use to your advantage. Um, but it can also go both ways. It yeah. can be something that's extremely beneficial, but it can also really, really hurt you if you're not careful with it. And you mentioned your mother's agency. Your, your mother owns a, a, runs a modeling agency? 
No, no. So a, a mother agency. It's like my mother agent. So oh. yeah. So so for example, she's based in Atlanta, right? And so she's my mother agent. So she would help to get um, other agents that are under her. So so let's say for every job I do, let's say I signed with um, New York Models in New York. My brother signed with them, so I was using them as an example. Um, so she would get me signed with them. So any job they would book for me, you know, they get 20%. She gets 10% of everything oh. I do. She's my mother agent. So she's kind of like the umbrella. I apologize. I must look like a, a modeling well, idiot. No, no. Like, I have no idea. I didn't know no, this was a thing. Well, mother no, agent. Yeah. That's the terminology, mother agent? Yeah. A, a mother agent. A mother agency. And then, I mean, if you think about the term, it, it kind of makes sense. They are, you know, they are the the mother. She takes care of business and she kind of oversees everything. You know, she's the one that, you know, if I'm somewhere at three o'clock in the morning, you know, I call Keela. So, wow. you know, or my mom and dad, of course, but you know, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, and you mentioned the fact that you you don't know if your, your career's heading into hard news at, at the moment, you know, the short term, um, but you're, it's more lifestyle reporting. How do you thread the needle of your social media posts to fit that? Because, uh, and, and the reason I bring this up is like, do people, will people take, and, and I apologize if this comes out wrong, but like, do people take you seriously as a, a, an interviewer if, oh, this is a model? And you know how there's always this this sort of like stereotype of a, of a model. So do you have to thread that needle somehow to be like, you know, no, I'm, I'm more than a model on, on yeah. what, I'm, what I'm presenting myself as? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that being a young woman today um you are met and, and there's been quite a few people that i've interviewed that i could tell when they walked in the room that they did not take me seriously or they were like oh okay you know oh, this will be a cakewalk you know she doesn't really know what she's talking about um and and, and I, I think that that's just kind of a par for the course um, the modeling, it, it's not something that I really do anymore, but, but I think just in general, um, that is something that a lot of young women deal with and experience. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's kind of, um, you have to just change your perspective and change the way that you look at it. You know, that guy, when he walked in and I could tell that he wasn't taking me seriously, I'm telling you, Joe, he left and he did not feel that same way. And, and, and that for me yeah. was extremely, um, validating and, and, and maybe feel really good. And, um, and so it's, you know, it's, it's a gift and a curse and you just really have to change the way that, that you look at it because unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. It's something that's just going to happen. Yeah. You can't change the way you look and, and you, you have a job to do, but again, yeah. like I said, I think people could have, you know, these sort of predisposed, you know, yeah. oh, okay, here we go. It's just a pretty girl who's, who's got who's holding the microphone. She has no experience in this, so it could happen. But again, you you know, you'll probably spend the rest of your career trying to prove people wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but I mean, you know, but then there's also it's um it goes both ways. Of course, you're gonna have those people that you know are are that way, like that guy was. But then there's also gonna be people that um just want to see you win. So. You know, I, and I think that bo having both of those is extremely important in, in whatever you do. I mean, you can't have everyone can't be cheering you on the whole time. You know, you have to have some some people that, you know, you got to prove wrong a little bit. And, and that, you know, you have to turn that into fuel, as they say, I guess. Good for you. Good for you. Um, all right. So I was very fortunate that I started my career in the number one market in New York. I was yeah. very lucky. It's not, it's, it's rare. I, I just happen to be, like I said, right place, right time. Um, what is the trajectory now for uh, someone working in news in, 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 at the local level? To, and it seems like you are very future focused. Like you, you have your eye on the prize. Is there, uh, I don't even want to say like an hourglass or is there like a ticking clock where you're like, man, there's only so long I could do this. And I know probably your bosses may watch it, so I'm not saying like you're going to leave any day, but is it something that you are actively thinking about of like, hey, th I can only do so much in my current role and then, you know, something's going to have to change. Um, is that something that people in your position think about all the time or do you take it day by day? I mean, I know just between you and I, when I was younger, I had zero self-awareness. I was like, I I'm happy to have this job. I don't even got <laughs> I'm not thinking about <laughs> no. tomorrow. I'm just thinking about today. But are you thinking about tomorrow? Yeah, um, always. And, and I think that's 
that's how I've always operated is, you know, people ask, like, oh, what's your five-year plan? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. And, and I've always been someone who I'm just focused on the next step, the next step, the next step, the next step. So being in this job in Charleston, as wonderful as it has been, especially in news, it's, it's this thing that you have to go to grow. Yep. Um, but I have been able to stay in Charleston and, and have this job that I absolutely love. But I have been able to grow significantly in the role that I have. Uh, traditionally, you know, people are reporters and then they move and they move. Like I, I do have a girlfriend that uh, went and started, you know, in, in one market, worked there for a year. Another market, she's just, you know, she is just, she's going and she's growing. And, and that's something that you have to do. Um, but luckily for me, I've been put in this position where now um, when I do, because I have stayed for two years, um, when I go to apply for that next job, whenever that is, um, I have this experience, um, and these titles that are very important and that will change the trajectory of my next job. If I applied a year ago, I would not have the opportunities that I have today. And then I will have a year from today. Awesome. It doesn't seem like you take your job for granted, but what is it like having this privilege of being able to be literally walk into people's living rooms every night, uh, help people tell their story. Um, because I always had this thing when I, w when I worked in the radio station was, uh, you know, the the station was located in Midtown Manhattan, like a block away from the Empire State Building. And I remember like early on, I, I again, lacked terrible self-awareness. But then one day as I was walking into the studio at four o'clock in the morning, because I was working mornings, I looked up. And my office was in the building connected to Madison Square Garden. And I was like, I looked up and I said, how cool is this? Like, I have this privilege of being able to not only work in the in the biggest market in the world, have this amazing job, but like attached to the building that's had some of the greatest events that's ever happened in the history of mankind. And going forward from that day on, I was like, I, I'm, I get this privilege. I, I, I know I'm very fortunate. I mean, I worked my ass off, but I know I'm fortunate to have this privilege. What is it like for you to have this privilege right now in your, it, it, you know, in your stage of your career to be able to have this connection, to connect with people in the community, to connect with people to walk into your studio to talk to them? To, tell me about what that means like to you. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to really put into words how... It makes me feel um, the conversations I have with people and um, and, and really it's um, it, it's a gift and I don't really know what I did to deserve this right now. Um, but I do think that it has the way that it has these people's stories and, and meeting all these incredible, wonderful people who have, you know, who are starting organizations and charities and, and who donate their time to their community. I, I mean, it really is um, an incredible privilege. And, and I don't know another job, maybe, you know, a podcast host who, <laughs> who has the, the privilege of getting to talk to these people and, and, and getting to hear um, all, all of the wonderful things that they're doing. So um, it's emotional and it's um, it, it can be a little, um, um, uh, uh, emotionally exhausting because you want to, you have all these people that you're talking to and you, and you want to give them the platform and the questions that they deserve. And, um, and, and I think it's, it, it's stressful a, a little bit because, because you are put in this position and you, and you want to do such an incredible job for them and whatever they have going on. Um, but really, I, I mean, the privilege is, like I said, I don't know why I'm here or, or why I'm put in this position, but I do feel like it will all make sense one day. And, um, and, and, and I just feel so incredibly lucky and blessed and um, to have this job that I absolutely love so much. I mean, oh my goodness, I feel like that's so rare these days to do something that you love. Um, and I do something that I absolutely love and, and the people that I've met here and the relationships I've made are, um, you can't put a price tag on that. And, and it's my job that I go to every day. So it, it really is a blessing and, um, and, and something that I don't think I will ever take for granted ever.
knock on wood. Awesome. Well said. Yeah. Uh, her name is Taylor Miller. Taylor, if folks want to connect with you, follow you. If they're not in the Charleston area, but want to you know track down where you are and find out more about you, where's the first place to start? Um, I would say my Instagram, Taylor underscore Miller 249. Um, but yeah, and also, I mean, email me. Like, I would love to connect. And if you have a story you want to share, you can email me at tcmiller at foxcharleston.com. Um, and I would absolutely uh, be honored. And Joe, thank you again for for having me on and taking the time to talk with me today. It's so weird being on the other side of, of the I know. interview. It's, yeah. it's always awkward when it's reversed. Like, even when I'm a guest somewhere, I'm like, wait a minute, I should be the one steering the conversation. But I'm glad you I were know, you're like, a willing guest. I appreciate you taking the time and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you, as, as I do to you as well. And that's going to do it for this episode of Good Listen. Uh, you can always connect with me on X, LinkedIn, or Instagram at Joe Partavilla or on TikTok at J Partavilla. If you want to shoot me a note and tell me your story, you can write me, Joe Partavilla at protonmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'd love it if you could hit that thumbs up button. It's a small gesture, but it really helps my channel. And if you're checking this out on Apple or Spotify, please leave a five-star review. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I will see you next time. Adios.